I'm Cassandra Clare, and I'm going to read a section from my newest book, Chain of Gold. James Herondale was in the middle of fighting a demon when he was suddenly pulled into hell. It wasn't the first time it had happened, and it wouldn't be the last. Moments earlier, he had been kneeling at the edge of a slanted roof in central London, a slim throwing knife in each hand, thinking about how disgusting the detritus that collected in the city was. In addition to dirt, empty gin bottles, and animal bones, there was definitely a dead bird wedged into the rain gutter just below his left name. How glamorous the life of a shadow hunter was indeed. It sounded good, he thought, gazing down at the empty alley below him, a narrow space choked with rubbish, lit dimly by the half moon overhead. A special race of warriors, descended from an angel, gifted with powers that allowed them to wield weapons of shining atomus and to bear the black marks of holy runes on their bodies, Runes that made them stronger, faster, more deadly than any mundane humans. Runes that made them burn brightly in the dark. No one ever mentioned things like accidentally kneeling on a dead bird while waiting for a demon to turn up. A yell echoed down the alley, a sound James knew well, Matthew Fairchild. He launched himself off the roof without a moment's hesitation. Matthew Fairchild was his parabatai, his blood brother and warrior partner. James was sworn to protect him, not that it mattered. He would have given his life for Matthew's vows or not. Movement flashed at the end of the alley, where it curved behind a narrow row of houses. James spun as a demon emerged from the shadows. It had a ribbed gray body, a curving sharp beak lined with hooked teeth, and splayed paw-like feet from which ragged claws protruded. A domus demon, James thought grimly. He definitely remembered reading about domus demons in one of the old books his Uncle Jem had given him. They were meant to be notable in some way, maybe very vicious or unusually dangerous. That would be typical, wouldn't it? All these months of not running across any infernal activity at all, and he and his friends happened on one of the most dangerous demons out there. Speaking of which, where were his friends? The Domus roared again and lurched towards James, drool spilling from its mouth in long strings of greenish slime. James swung his arm back, ready to throw the first knife. The demon's eyes fixed on him for a moment. They were coruscating, green and black, filled with a hate that turned suddenly into something else. Something like recognition. But demons, at least the lesser kind, didn't recognize people. They were vicious animals driven by pure greed and hatred. As James hesitated in surprise, the ground under him seemed to lurch. He had only a moment to think, oh no, not now, before the world went gray and silent. The buildings around him had turned to ragged shadow, the sky a black cave speared with white lightning. He closed his right hand around his knife, not the handle, but the blade. The jolt of pain was like a slap to the face, snapping him out of a stupor. The world came rushing back at him in all its noise and color. He barely had time to register that the Dumas was in midair, claws extended toward him, when a swirl of cords whipped through the sky, entangling the demon's leg and yanking it backward. Thomas, James thought, and indeed his massively tall friend had appeared behind the Dumas, armed with his bolas. Behind him was Christopher, armed with a bow, and Matthew, a seraph blade, blazing in his hand. The Domus hit the ground with another roar just as James let both his knives fly. One plunged into the demon's throat, the other into its forehead. Its eyes rolled back, it spasmed, and James suddenly remembered what it was he'd read about Domus demons. Matthew, he began, just as the creature burst apart, showering Thomas, Christopher, and Matthew in ichor, and burned bits of what could only be described as goo. Messy, James recalled belatedly. Domus demons were notably messy. Most demons vanished when they died, but not Domus demons. They exploded.